Hi, this is Debbie Dashinger from the Dare to Dream show. And today's program features Shelly Young, owner of Trinity Esoterics, where she has worked as a hypnotist, writer, spiritual advisor, healer, trans channel medium, and internationally recognized channel of Archangel Gabriel. And you'll want to stick around because not only will she be sharing some illuminating thoughts, but Shelly is also going to be channeling Archangel Gabriel later on the show. Dare to Dream podcast won the COVR award for best radio and podcast show. It is listed in Wealth Magazine as one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to this year, nominated for a People's Choice Podcast Award for a Webby Award, and it is high ranked under self improvement in Apple Podcasts. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness. They do energy work out in the world. So if you'd like to go to a class or become a facilitator, go to Dr. Dane, H-E-E-R.com, DaneHere.com. I'm Debbie Dashinger. I am a media visibility expert. I'm a book writing coach. I take books to guaranteed international bestseller and I advise spiritual messengers how they can be interviewed on radio and podcast and get massive results. I've got a twice monthly Zoom book writing class so you can join anywhere in the world and we take your book from inception of idea to published. Once your book is done, my company runs a guaranteed international best-selling launch for you. And then finally, I've got a boutique agency for some very special spiritual messengers that I represent. And I have been teaching y'all how to be interviewed for years. And it is the greatest way to get your message out there and meet your tribe who you wouldn't have met otherwise. Please allow me to give you a free gift so you can learn how to do all of this on your own. Go to debbiedashinger.com slash gift, D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com slash gift. My guest, Shelly Young, owner of Trinity Esoterics, where she's worked and she's been there for the past 19 years doing this brilliant work as a channel, as a healer, as an advisor. She's originally from Canada and is now based in Southwest Florida, where she remains dedicated to raising spiritual awareness and helping people embrace and navigate the unfoldment of their own enlightenment journeys. Shelley's book is Healing Balm for the Enlightening Soul, and one of her programs featuring the most important of Gabriel's teachings is the divine combination. To learn more about her and her work, go to trinityesoterics.com. And I welcome Shelly Young to the Dare to Dream show. It is great to have you here. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, me as well. I would love if you would talk about who exactly is Archangel Gabriel, and especially who is Archangel Archangel Gabriel to you? What do you know this being as? Um, through the dark night of the soul, I I surrendered to God because there was just nothing left that I could do. I didn't realize what a power move that was. <laughs> Um, I was in a terrible space in my life, and I knew that I needed to be able to get answers for myself. I became very, very invested in connecting with some kind of higher wisdom for myself. And from that act of surrender, I ended up, as if by magic, swept off to hypnosis school, which I never could have imagined becoming a hypnotherapist. And then I started using the cool new tool of hypnosis to connect with any being that would have anything to do with me. <laughs> so I would literally go into hypnosis and hello, anybody just, you know, wanting, I would call on every being I could imagine. And I always laugh and say, Gabriel took one for the team because probably after <laughs> a while of that, he probably said, okay, I'll go talk to her. <laughs> And the funny part was, I didn't even know there was an Archangel Gabriel. Oh. I actually looked it up and he was not only real, he was kind of a big deal. Mm -hmm. And so it was from that 
act of surrender and being open and curious Mm. that that relationship happened. And when I surrendered, I surrendered into being of my highest service. And I think that was really kind of the magic piece that allowed that really divine relationship to begin. So he is... Um, he has shown up in all of the major religious texts, which I can't speak on, but I know that he's been in all of the majors. He was the one that went and told Mother Mary that she would give birth to Jesus. Mm. That's that's what he did. And he often travels with her. They work as a team. They have a long working relationship. She's very present today more than I've ever felt her for a show, which is really interesting. It's actually making my eye water a little bit. Um, So, yeah, he's funny, he's wise, he's taught me everything I teach, and I just when I think he couldn't tell me one more new thing, something new shows up, and I experience him as male. Mm. Okay, that's interesting, very interesting, and thank you for also that piece about Mary. I have a, a strong affinity, let's say, for Mary. Yeshua and Magdalene, like pretty profound. And I'm pretty clear I was there. So I love that that is even happening. Oh my gosh, I just me. got full of chills in my whole. Yeah, absolutely. So that maybe that's probably why she's showing up so strongly for this show. Well, she is, she is so welcome. Yeah. And 19 years, I mean, that is a really big surrender. And <laughs> What I love about what you shared, I just want to say is that anybody who's listening and watching right now in their own life, wherever they're at, should they have a dark night of the soul, they could do this too. Like this is just a a real release to say, I completely like whatever I'm doing, it's not working. I completely surrender. I give it up. I turn it over. And I think magically, you you really weren't open to just anything. You weren't just an open portal, but you were being clear. It's a benevolent energy because I'm I'm here to be of service. So, yeah. and then look what steps forward. In these 19 years of working with Gabriel, it, has your relationship changed? Has how he is with you changed? How has that all become a metamorphosis? That's a great question. Um, In the early days, I had to put myself into a really, really deep state of hypnosis in order to connect with him. And from working in that energy for so many years, it's become lighter and lighter and lighter. And now I'm pretty much a conscious channel, where before I was kind of a deep trance channel. So, you know, it's, it's, I think it's probably just we've created an energetic meld between us from working together for so long. And, and that's why that's happened. That's amazing. I've noticed that because I do a lot of work with people who channel and sometimes they do projects and bring them in. And I have noticed sometimes they want to just come in and be them. They don't want to channel and they don't need to. There is definitely a melding that has happened and they have so much wisdom that would have come through the being or the energy. Absolutely. Wow. What a huge life benefit for you. (laughs) Oh, I have every single client session I've ever had. I've learned something from myself. Mm, powerful. You know, powerful. It's, and that's what makes it so wonderful is that we're, you know, it's never, it's never boring. It's never old. There's some always something new. It's always expanding and growing. And I love what you said. Anyone can move into their own relationship with whatever being they're best energetically aligned with to work. And here's the good news. You don't have to do the dark night of the soul. (laughs) You can just surrender right now before you're in the fetal position on the living room floor like I was. (laughs) So most of us don't surrender because we're afraid of it. And we only will move into surrender when we've tried everything else and there's just no other option left. And that was definitely the case for me I wish I knew that I could have surrendered a lot earlier because it would have made things a lot easier. So Mm. you don't have to wait till you're down and out to do it. (laughs) And you're in Southwest Florida. Are there a lot of Floridians by you who are into this, into channeling, into metaphysics? And do you do a lot in person or mostly online? 
I work almost exclusively online, so I don't know a lot of people um, that are that are channeling here yet, but I, I hope that expands. Yeah, you're changing the frequency there. I like it. It's um, I, I ended up exactly where I needed to be. That's for sure, because I got swept here. Mm. And then there was something I read a sign one day that the Charlotte Harbor, where, where I live, is um, the Harbor of the Holy Spirit. Oh. And some people say that Gabriel is actually the Holy Spirit. So I was like, OK, that's a clue. <laughs> I ended up here. It's a big clue. Awooga. Oh, my God. That's hilarious. Wow. Yeah. Who needs astrocartography when you have signs <laughs> like that? Well, Absolutely. surrender, faith, flow, and trust will get you where you need to be, right? Mm, powerful. It is. Yeah, and, and I I was fascinated by the fact that your favorite program or where Gabriel's most wisdom comes through is this divine combination program. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to ask about that body of work and if you might be willing to share with us what are the elements of divine combination, how and and how are they used together yeah. and does it open a doorway to something absolutely it does gabriel first started talking to me about the divine combination i would say maybe about 18 years ago and so i was still in a really super exploratory phase of connecting with spirit and like to ask a lot of questions and you have to remember now 19 years ago the internet was not what it is today. I was way up in Northern Ontario. There weren't a lot of resources, even in terms of books or anything. So I'm completely self-taught. Um, so, you know, it was a lot of getting information and then fact-checking however we could afterwards to make sure that it was valid what we were getting. And so I would just channel sometimes, you know, just kind of go into a channeling state and see what would come through. And that was when he first talked about the divine combination, which are the elements of surrender, faith, flow, and trust. And do you know, I'm still learning things about this system 18 years later. It continues to blow my mind. It's so incredibly, almost deceptively simple, but there's so much that goes on within it. So it is an alchemical formula. All of the elements have to be in place, but when they are, they open the door to enlightenment. Gabriel calls it the higher vibrational navigating system of the human being. And you enter into the divine combination through surrender and you stay there in your faith and trust. And what happens is when faith and trust are used together, it opens the door to acceptance. Acceptance opens the doorway to peace which opens the doorway to your beingness. And beingness is all about where we're going in these new energies. It's about, it's not, you know, we've been releasing so much and we're like, how much more can I release? Or, you know, how much more can stuff can come up? But what we've been releasing is everything that's not our true divine nature. And so that's leading us to then operate through our beingness into our perfect service, into our perfect experiences, pioneering our way forward. And it's the divine combination that helps you get to that state of beingness. And so with the surrender and the faith and the flow and the trust, what I'm looking for more of a descriptive, because I know we hear those words a lot. It's like, you know, let go, just let go, just go with the flow. I love all those words, actually. But actually doing that, I know the times in my life when I've done it, and it hasn't been necessarily a dark night of the soul, but I was so stymied, I had no idea. When I gave up my acting career, it was huge. It's all I had been my whole life was a professional actress and singer. Something shifted and I thought, I can't give this up. And I resisted for three years. I think exhaustion was why I surrendered because I finally said, I, I don't know how to handle this. I have no idea what I do if I don't do that. So take it, somebody show me and I'm yeah. going to back off. So that I know, but I'm sure there are much easier ways 
to get to these things like surrender and faith and flow. Can you talk about that? Yeah, I think what happens in a lot of cases is people use one element. So I surrender, but they don't necessarily stay in the flow with their faith and trust. Or, um, you know, maybe they're in the flow, but they're not really surrendered. Sometimes we play tug of war where you're like, you know, God take the wheel. And then you're like, well, maybe I'll take it back for a little while. And we don't stay in it long enough to really see the magic that happens. So when we hit the dark night of the soul, it actually serves the purpose of us entering into the divine combination through that act of surrender. And usually when we're too exhausted to do anything else, we kind of stay in that flow and see what happens. And then oftentimes you will feel energetic relief and kind of enter into a super flow that starts taking you where your soul's been trying to get you. So what happens a lot of the times is we're trying to figure stuff out through our mind, but surrendering gives your guidance system permission to get out there and lead you. You start watching for the signs and synchronicities. You realize how loved and supported you are, which makes you kind of love yourself more and be willing to stay in it. And then all of a sudden you start experiencing greater ease, things coming together as if by magic. So I think what happens most times is people try and get there with one or two individual elements, not understanding that they all need to be employed together. And typically the ones that people really struggle with is surrender or trust, staying in it, in, in it long enough with their faith and trust until the magic happens. What yeah. can happen a lot of times where people kind of play around with it is they surrender and they say, okay, I'm gonna stay in the surrender with my, my faith and trust. I'm going to stay in this flow and it takes them right up to their biggest challenge. And then they're like, well, this doesn't work. No, if you don't freak out and you stay there, what happens is you get guided around, under, through, over that challenge into the solutions that exist. So most people try it for a minute and then they say, oh, well, that doesn't work before they allow your guides to get you where you wanted to go. I have to ask you to say that again in a different way, because my being sensed the enormity of that. <laughs> and I really want to hear it again about should you surrender or be in a flow and you experience what you perceive as an obstacle, take it over. When you surrender and come up against the obstacle, it's because your divine guidance is leading you to your divine solutions. Mm -hmm. And usually when you're frustrated, it's because you know there's a solution, but you can't find it from your vantage point. So it's almost like passing the baton <laughs> to your guides to lead you through the forest that you can't see your way out of into the discovery of cleaning that up. And then the really good stuff starts to happen afterwards. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because when we're in that state, uh, you know, if it kicks up anxiety or controlling, or like you said, being in your head and trying to work it out, figure it out, many things, it's, there is zero flow. It's actually very painful to be in that place. Ask oh. me how I know. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so it's, it's very true. And, you know, for instance, and this is just once upon a time, this would have been so important to me. And now it's kind of like, I can say it as a sort of, I'm brushing it off, which is amazing how far I've come. If I have a client for whatever reason, who needs to drop out because I do have a private service. I am so at peace. I'm like, that's beautiful. I love them. I wish them well. I, you know, we never part on bad terms ever, but I wish them well because in my heart, I know so wow, something even better is coming. Like, how cool is that? I have a even like <gasps> maybe a client with a bigger name, or we're gonna have a deeper connection, or they're more responsible in the 3D, or a million other things. And I live for that and it happens, whether it, it may be two months, but it happens. Yeah. That's yeah. the faith and trust part that allows you to keep going to, to, until you discover it. Mm. Yeah. Wow. See, I think what happens too is a lot of people have fear over surrender because mm. they think it means that they're just going to be careening about wildly and they have no control. 
or they consider it like giving up in a in a negative disempowered way but it's not giving up it's giving up it's when you can't see from your vantage point allowing yourself to be guided from those who can see what's available for you because let's face the facts if you've been if you're to the point where you're in a ball because you're so uncomfortable if the solution existed within what you could see you would already be doing it the way to get to where the solutions exist is through that because your guides lead you there you can't imagine it i couldn't imagine being a channel of an archangel i mean i mean who could <laughs> imagine that right it, nobody can imagine that it was definitely not on my radar but because i followed the steps that's where i landed up mm. so it's actually a power move but people don't realize that very cool and so what does all of this have to do with manifestation? How does manifestation? Everything. Yeah. <laughs> Everything. But Gabriel calls it the difference between 3D and 5D manifestation. Hmm. So, so a lot of times we will do, you know, the basic manifestation where you see it, you feel it, you imagine it, you taste it. It's, it's so there that it's, you know, you're, you're feeling it in all ways. And that does work, but it's still only creating within the realm of what you think is possible. When you use surrender, faith, flow, and trust, you end up in the solutions that you couldn't possibly imagine that are so incredibly perfect that it blows your mind. I love that. I feel so good to me. Yeah. And you teach this live or it's an online program? It's a it's a self-study course that, that I have online. I do once in a while teach it live but most times i don't it's it's just online for people to move through at their own pace but i am always available by email for any questions any students have wow so the divine combination okay yeah that's so lovely thank you oh you're welcome and when you say you feel mother mary here talk about that what what is that what is that feeling or what is that connection or what's happening there for you or with you to you she's coming in so strongly today which is very confusing to me it's never happened on a show before to be honest with you which again must be part of you know that you're so connected to her um i was being told earlier today that they would be here in equal measure and usually it's it's all gabriel and i just kind of you know sometimes i'll censor when she's near um i feel cold. I feel cool, like warm on the inside and cold on the outside, if that makes sense. Um, it's very high vibrational. With both of them, I get kind of a minty mentholated sensation, almost like somebody took fix and put it on my chest. Sometimes people feel it up their nose. It's actually called the breath or the kiss of an angel. That, that can be one of your angel signs. Um, but today I feel almost like I'm trembling just because the energy is so high for me right now. That's wild. Wow. <laughs> and, you know, I read Tom Kenyon's book years ago, uh, the Magdalene Manuscripts. And I will just say I had zero connection there, but I was excited to read the book and it dove into her in a way that I had not heard before. That was really important. And then um, sacred sexuality and the temple of Isis and Hathor. And it was the most amazing read for me. And I just fell in love with all of what that was and all of who they were and who Yeshua and Magdalene were to each other. Whoa. And some time after I put down the book, I just had this knowing I was there. I was in that temple. I know this, I know them. And I went, okay, because <laughs> I'm I'm the most open-minded skeptic, right? So when these things happen, it's always, it's kind of a big deal. It's mm -hmm. like, I I trust when that happens because things like that do not happen very often. Right. So, um, and then since then, of course, I've learned so much more and followed so much more about her and um, read some of Kathleen McGowan's material that does go into mother mary and poof just beautiful 
like the story of all stories, the beings of all beings. So it's really an honor that she has chosen to show up so big today. And is there anything she wants? Is there anything she wants to do? Or it's just whenever you channel, she feels she will want to come through at some point. Um, I don't know that she's going to speak. She's never well, actually, I have channeled her once or twice before, but it's not something that I do very often. Um, and that was many years ago. I don't feel that, but I felt, and I'll know more once I get in that space, but I felt like she wanted to offer a blessing of grace to everyone that listens to this because she was talking about having self-grace as being an essential part of allowing yourself to step into your beingness. So we'll find out. I don't know. <laughs> it's good that I don't know though, <laughs> you know, because it, it keeps it authentic. I don't want to try and um, conform it into anything. That's the only thing I heard about it so far. So we'll see. Oh, that's lovely. Okay. Well, if you are in a place where you feel good to transition into that, I warmly invite you to. How do you feel? I feel great. Yeah. Great. I do use, I put myself into a light state of hypnosis when I channel. It's very light. Uh, like I say, it's getting lighter and lighter. I could probably do it with my eyes open at this point, but I'm so used to doing it the certain way that I feel like I have to, to make sure that I'm doing a good job. So I'm not going to experiment on your show with that. I'm going to do it tried and true. <laughs> okay. It's beautiful. Okay, yeah. Just give me one second. Yeah. <clears throat> Greetings, dear ones, how pleased we are to be in your presence today. We honor you for your intrepid hearts, for your tenderness, your tenacity, and for coming to anchor the energies of the group. And of course, when we say group, we mean not only those who are experiencing this transmission live at this time, but also those who will experience this transmission on your internet at a later time. We cannot stress enough the gloriousness of the times that you are in. You are on the precipice of great and monumental changes on your planet, both within and without. The shift that you are all going through at this time is about shifting from the old habit system of doing, 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 doing in order to hopefully be one day, because that day never seems to come when you are stuck with the doing, into allowing yourself to be and through your beingness, then take inspired action to do. It is a monumental shift. And this is what you have been working towards moving forward and allowing yourself to let go of all of the things that you are not into the expression of who you really are, into being the divine transmission of your truth, of your energetics. That is the shift of service that many of you are moving into. And what is so remarkable is when you allow yourself to let go of everything that you are not and to simply sit in the acceptance and in the presence of who you really are in your beingness, that you start to remember other life expressions where you were of service and you did it incredibly well and you wish to release that as being your apex experience and to take those skills and bring them back and do them in new ways in these new energies. So many of you will be experiencing a shift of service, discovering new purpose-driven ideas, being shifted to different areas on your planet, assisting the earth, assisting the grids. There will be a myriad of service opportunities that are no longer the martyred service paradigm, but rather the joyful service paradigm. 
which is what you are anchoring in. It is getting used to the fact that your beingness is more than enough. Your growth is your service. You are not fixer uppers any longer, dear ones. You are divine and perfection exactly as you are. And many of you are afraid that if you accept that, that you'll run amok. You will not. You are conscious. You are aware. If you tried to misuse your gifts and your sensitivities, you would get so uncomfortable, you would immediately redirect. Because you are worried about it, it is safe for you to move into your highest expression of self. Those that are not worried about checking themselves are the ones that get in trouble with that, you see. It is safe to be the divine you you came on to the planet to be. That is your highest service. Finding your beingness, accepting it, and allowing that to lead the way. That is the embodiment process you are in. And it is absolutely glorious to see. Mm. Oh your beingness is everything. Mm. And there is not one other thing you need to do to be worthy or to meet your purpose on the planet. And allowing yourself to be moved with divine inspiration is where you will make your greatest discoveries. And there is another thing that is happening that you may not be aware of that the Divine Mother is here to help you with. And that is the activation of your own divine heart centers. The part of you that is filled with love and grace for all on the planet, including yourselves. Allowing yourself to be the bringer of energy, not the catcher of energy. To stand in your truth and your authenticity as the essential aspect of source that you really are, that lends itself to the mosaic of the whole. And so we invite you in this moment to open up and to surrender into receiving, into accepting the beingness that you are. And we invite you to see the glorious golden light of source energy. And as you do, you see a being emerge from that source energy that is absolutely breathtakingly beautiful to behold. It is pure, it is good, it is divine. And we wish for you to know that that being is you. It is the truth of you. And our wish for you today that you will surrender into the knowingness of that divine truth that you are. And the Divine Mother is assisting you in that process as well. Parenting you, guiding you, loving you, filling up all of your inner child aspects, any wounded fragments with her divine love so that you can experience yourself in the completeness that you were always meant to be, that you always have been. You've just been working your way back to that discovery. It is safe to trust in your own divine nature. In fact, that is exactly what you are on the planet to do. And that is what we wish to share with you today. It has been our great pleasure.
Thank you so much. That was really apropos. A lot of gratitude for that. Oh, Timing, gee. amazing. <laughs> yeah, that was deep. <clears throat> How beautiful. Um, <laughs> yeah, all of this conversation is so appropriate right now. And I'd love people to weigh in and, you know, mention whatever in the comments, how that sat for you and what that relates to. I can say for me, I have had some magnificent opportunities come my way and have been extremely humbled and excited by them and said yes and have stepped into them. And as I stepped into them, more downloads were coming that I started to execute. And down the road, I found myself um, muddied in this, like heavy mud is the best way I could describe it. Whereas normally I'm just, I move forward. I know what to do. There are steps. Like I have actually gotten so overwhelmed. And when Archangel Gabriel was talking about, you're so busy be, um, doing, 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 and we're asking you to be, uh, that's where all the solution is. And I was like, ah. I have not been, and I, um, and it's, this is actually a very new place for me to be right now. It's a very interesting place, but I am also just with compassion saying, this is not just a new place emotionally, but this is a new experience I have chosen to say yes to. So with that and all the modern technology that I'm trying to take on and, um, you know, there's lots of things I've, I've never done before um, videos I'm making and like, it's pretty multimedia. So yeah, all of this, I'm just saying for myself and everybody else, surrender, flow, trust. Like one of my favorite sayings is you would have not been given the dream if you didn't have the power to make it come true. And so there's trust even in that, like, oh, okay, this was given to me. I said, yes, this was given to you, everybody out there. You said yes, or you want to say yes to just yeah. trust. Yeah. And that grace that Mother Mary gave us was so beautiful. That whole experience was incredibly calming. Like, you I thought, really had something really interesting in the daily message today. Hmm. He's been talking a lot about the gift of not knowing. Mm. And I think so many people, I know I hear from my clients all the time, they're frustrated, you know, they feel stuck. They, they don't know what to do next. They're, you know, they feel like they're in a holding pattern or they just don't know what to do. And he said, you know, when we don't know what, where we're going, it's a gift because we get expansive, we get curious. But what he said was, it's actually the modern version of when people used to go off into the desert and would come back with a new clarity of vision and a new clarity of service and purpose. Mm -hmm. So obviously we're all not all gonna go into the desert in modern times, but he said, that's actually the beauty of it. And sometimes when we can't figure it out with our head, we have no choice but to get into that heart-centered space, into that more surrender. And what I love so much, it's funny that you mentioned the access consciousness piece, because I find one of the most powerful um, affirmations that you can use when you're in this space is, how does it get any better than this? Because there's no attachment to what that looks like. You're very open. You're willing to be guided. You're asking your guidance system to move you forward into what you're not aware of now. It's a powerhouse. And I use it all the time or asking spirit, okay, show me the next step, show me. And if nothing's happening, it just means be, beingness is doing something. It's a higher vibrational doing is your being, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Yes. And I love that you brought that up. How does it get any better than this? How am I so lucky? How did I get so lucky? They yeah. have, yes, yeah, some really amazing things you can say and, yeah. and it's powerful stuff. And, and what's even really amazing is when you're in a great place, everything's going so well. And you're like, how does it get any better than this? What an invitation that is. Like, I, I, think, 
I've experienced that in my life before I even knew about that. And I didn't even know what it was. I was at Mont Saint Michel in France. And it was the most incredible experience that day. I got to meditate and pray with monks and nuns. It was just pure magic. And I stepped out into the cloisters and I looked up at the sky in gratitude. And I just said, wow, how does this get any better than this? And at that moment, a butterfly came and landed in front of me. And I was like, oh my God, it could get better. <laughs> you know, I didn't think that it could, but because I asked the question, I opened to having the experience. It's so powerful. Hmm. What does Gabriel talk about when it comes to myth around soul connections and twin flames? What is his take on that? We teach a lot about that. As a matter of fact, I have a program on that, uh, twin flames and soul connections. Um, it's called twin flames and soul connections. Cause you know, we kind of had to call it that. So people know what we're talking about. Um, but the twin flame word has kind of come with a lot of heavy stuff. You know, some people have kind of misused it, or there's some teachings that are kind of separation rather than unifying, you know, like some people kind of use it like my relationships better than anybody else's and stuff like that. So we really prefer soul connection mm -hmm. and all soul connections behave the same. It's an energetic meld more than anything else. And, and I don't know of any other teachers that teach about this. And, and I learned this directly from Gabriel as I've learned everything from Gabriel. And he said, it is one of the most powerful energetic shifts and in integration you can possibly go through. And the whole, you know, they talk a lot about runner chaser and everything. There's nothing wrong with that phase. It's actually necessary. Because you'll get to the point where you can't integrate any more of that energy because it's so high between the two of you that you've got to get out of each other's orbits to integrate that energy. And once it's integrated, you're ready for more and that pull kicks in and draws you back together again. So in a sense, it's a fractal of unity consciousness that you're anchoring on the planet, but you can't do it all at once. And that's why so many times these soul connections, they're unavailable in one, in one way or another. I know mine lived in a different country um, than, than I did. And I'm so grateful because there's no way I could have handled it had we been in the same place. It took three years before we were even able to be under the same roof. So it's, it's an incredibly, it's an energetic, process first and foremost and I tell my clients all the time it is not personal it's energetic it's got to go at the speed it's an unfoldment you can't rush it you can't push it you can't stop it you just have to guess what surrender into the flow of it and there's a place it sounds like what you're describing is that there's a place within relationships where um you were talking about runner chaser but I think also there's that power place. And then I think people get to, a couple gets to a place where it's a decision, right? It's a real crossroads about, are we going to go forward or discontinue this? And if we choose to go forward, I can't imagine any other choice other than to opt for extreme opening of the heart and intimacy, like to really allow oneself to melt into a relationship. Much as everybody says they want one and all the bennies that come with it i don't know how many people are actually equipped to fully release at that I, I will tell you if i didn't have a background of you know I, we've been together for nine almost nine years now so whatever that is like 10 let's call it 10 years of knowing the divine combination i couldn't have done it because it was being able to get into that space of acceptance no matter what it was doing and what happens is when you meet a soul connection, and that's, again, the phrase that we prefer to use because it keeps you, some people, if they think it's a twin flame and it's being abusive or it's not healthy, they'll stay because, oh, it's my twin flame. No, abuse is never okay, you know, ever. Doesn't matter who it's coming from. So I think soul connection, we, we get out of that mindset. And you know, what's going to happen is everything in you that needs to heal in order to be in an open hearted meld of a relationship is going to come up for healing. And that is no small feat. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> 
And it just is what it is. You have to, again, let go of everything that is not you so that you can be in that state of beingness. Mm -hmm. And it can't be done all at once. It's a process. Yeah. Is, do you have any clients who you took through this process or any of your students that you could give an example of where they were and how they use this to get through? Yeah, I actually had an email just from a client yesterday, as a matter of fact, and she had booked a reading for me with me and she was asking about this, this amazing relationship that she had met and it was all butterflies and rainbows. And then all of a sudden he pulled back and she didn't know what was wrong. And I was like, oh, I can tell you what's happening, <laughs> you know? A lot of times it's just so big and so overwhelming that you have to step back to get your bearings. So I was able to explain to her, this is an energetic process. You gotta let him take the lead. He's the one that's most activated right now. You're gonna have to stay in your truth and knowing what you know. You're gonna have to treat him like a little deer in the forest that you're trying to get to eat from your hand. You don't wanna make any sudden moves. <laughs> you know, you don't wanna have big, heavy discussions about how he's heinous for not talking to you because that's just gonna send him in the other way. Hold the space under no, understand what's going on and be receptive if he reaches out to you, but don't load it up with anything heavy. Just let him lead the way. And she did that and he came back and she was saying, oh, I think you saved our relationship. I didn't. She was the one that did the work. But she said, you know, he came back and he said it was just too strong. I, I didn't know what to do with it. But because she didn't force, he was able to integrate and come back in. And he already now understands that process, which is huge progress. What are the ways that we can, and yay for them, I hope they're really happy. That's really a beautiful story. Are there ways that we can best work in partnership with spirit? That's literally the name of one of my programs. I can't even believe you said that. <laughs> Is there a way? Yeah, well, well done. <laughs> We can work in partnership with spirit by asking, by inviting, by, you know, surrender, the whole surrender, faith, flow, trust model is literally how we work with spirit without having the skill of mediumship. Because you're working with them, you're, you're intending, you're moving, you're watching for the signs and synchronicities, you're allowing them to take the lead. What anyone can move into mediumship as well. And that's another way of having partnership with spirit. Mm -hmm. I never, ever want to present it like people that can hear spirit are more special than anybody else. Not at all. It's like playing the piano. It's a skill that anyone can learn. If you practice a lot, you get really good at it. <laughs> So um, absolutely asking, you know, like I did, hello, anybody, anybody talk to me, looking within yourself for the signs that let you know that you are with a higher vibrational being, which is so easy to tell higher chakra activation from the heart center up, you're with a higher being, a lower being cannot activate your heart doesn't have the ability to. Mm. So if you get if you're paying attention to your body, and you're getting those indicator, you are in the presence of a higher being. You've made a connection, start working with it. Say, you know, get louder so I can hear you. I really want to connect with you or, you know, I want to, I want to move with this, help my energy meld with yours so that we can start to work together and, and put some time into it. Show that you have that intention. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. I love that. I do a shamanic practice every single morning with my feet in the grass and yeah, there's a few things I do, but I always, at some point in the activation, I request magic and miracles, like, because it's always going to be way beyond anything that I think is big, which is really small that I could conceive of. So are there ways, are there methods that we can encourage more, more miracles, um, a beautiful, magical life, all of that, because I love the sound of all that. I like the idea of living in a book you'd want to read. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, I mean, you have, it's, it's intention, having a clear intention and then being willing to stay in the flow towards it. You know, 
Gabriel tells me that everything that we're seeking, if it's not in front of us, exists in the realm of potentiality. That's what he calls it, the realm of potentiality that holds all the wondrous things that we just haven't discovered yet. And so we get there through surrender because it's not where we are. If it was, we would already be living it. Mm -hmm. And that's how you find it. You allow yourself to let go of trying to figure it out into being guided into the discovery of it. And it is their greatest joy to do that. That Gabriel tells me all the time, one of the things that they love the most is setting up divine intersections. Oh. It's fun for them, he tells me. And he says, the like they, they wait with bated breath to see if people <laughs> actually stay in the surrender long enough for it to happen. And I, I almost get this picture like they lay bets on the side. like you know? <laughs> But he says... The, it, the uh, surrendered human beings or non-resistant human beings, so human beings that are in surrender, mm. are the easiest to move into those divine intersections where you meet the person and you there was an accident, you had to take a different road and you went into the market and that's where you meet the person or that's where you see the sign for the healer that changes your life or whatever. He says it's so much fun to set it up because they use their imagination and it's just good fun for them. <laughs> so. Oh, that's cool. I have another vision. I see them like, like literally like an intersection of two lights where cars are coming or people are walking. And I see them sitting off in the grassy area watching. Are they going to do it? Are they going to meet? Are they going to, is this person going to get the job? Is this going to set them off to the country they're supposed to be in? And, you know, hoping, hoping, hoping it's going to happen. Oh my gosh, Gabriel just dropped this in for me. It's so funny. So years ago, before I had my dark night of the soul, I was actually a bartender, which gave uh -huh. me great, great people skills. Doesn't seem like it would have apply but that's what yes. I did and sometimes when the bar was quiet me and my girlfriend would buy drinks from two single people and say that the other one sent it and just we'd sit back to see what would happen <laughs> and Gabriel's kind of dropping that in it's almost like they do that right they just sit back and watch what happens and people either dive through the opportunity or they don't amazing how did that work out by the way what happened it actually worked out really well yeah you met people, some cool wouldn't, people. They wouldn't have had the, um, the nerve to talk to each other, but then they did and it made for a great night. So, wow, that is, that, that is so fun and bold. I love that. Love that. <laughs> Do you have any sense, Shelly, about what we can expect 2023 and beyond? So I know that Gabriel mentioned like, yeah, you're in a really interesting time and yeah, you're giving lots up right now. And yeah. And healing a lot. What what is ours going forward? And and does he have anything to do with the realm of extraterrestrials? Does he have any connection there? I don't know. That's just coming in. So I'm asking. I mean, we're it's all part of the whole. So I mean, we're all connected. So the answer must be yes. But interestingly, um, I've worked exclusively with Gabriel or Mother Mary or Jesus or Michael for like the last 19 years. And all of a sudden, a, 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 a other world being showed up for me the other day that said, welcome to the Arcturian Council. And I was like, what? I couldn't believe it. And, you know, so obviously they must because he works with me and that's what's showing up. So I, I haven't had a lot of time to explore that yet, but that's super cool. I think that for a lot of us that do connect with other beings, there will be new beings showing up for us. There'll be new gifts that we'll be discovering, new discoveries. This is a really fun, exciting time. He tells me, be curious, get expansive, experiment. This is really good. Um, he tells me that the December, the winter solstice um, is the most important date that we're moving towards. That's why things are really intense for a lot of people where they're letting go, doing a lot of releasing where, you know, he talks about how solstices are kind of safe points where we save our, our progress. And he said, this is all in preparation of moving into 2024 that he says, for those that have really been very, you know, consciously doing their work and really, really dedicated to their paths, he says, it's going to be like getting shot out of a cannon. 
moving forward into like new discoveries and new services and new everything. And he said, kind of like that accelerated flow can kind of come with its own challenges when we're used to like waiting and being patient and everything. Um, and then the people that have been really resistant to their growth are going to be really hitting those dark nights of the soul. However, they serve the purpose of getting people to surrender. And when they surrender is when the massive change happens. So it's all forward movement mm -hmm. in a way, right? Everyone's moving forward. It's just some, for some people, it's faster to hit the bottom to then surrender and move up. And for other people, because we've been working, it's easier for us to just stay doing what we're doing, right? So it makes perfect sense to me. So that's that's what he's telling me. He's also talked about that we're in the, <laughs> um, what did he call it? The day of reckoning. He called it the day Ooh. of one day I woke up and he said, oh, people are in the day of reckoning. And I thought, what, the day of reckoning? So I run in Google because that's what I do when I hear things. <laughs> and um, he said that it's not it's not actually a day, it's a time period. And that's the time period that we're literally in from here until that solstice. And he said the day of reckoning isn't like some people think it's like judgment day, but it's not judgment day. What it is, is getting back the energy that you've put out. So it's just like karmic balancing. That's all it is. That's all it is. And it's fair and it's right and it's true. And the universe is taking care of it. So it's not like we have to do this because this is how people learn and grow. If they've never been held accountable for anything, how are they ever going to learn, right? We, we can't. And this is all part of the accelerated path for people moving forward too, because instead of like reincarnating and coming back and doing it a ton of times, you know, to try and get that experience, this is actually acceleration for them as well. So th this is the phase that we're in that he's talking about with me. So, and when he says, when he imparts this information about there'll be all new services and so forth, does he mean that <clears throat> those of us who provide something will be offering new services or the planet? We'll have like a buffet of new things to choose from. <laughs> uh, I think we're all in front of the buffet, really. But um, I think it's going to be individual. I don't think there's a one size fits all. I think some of us will be shifting what we do or how we do it, because there's a whole wave of people that are awakening to their service. So some of us will be you know, kind of releasing our service points. And, you know, like I left Northern Ontario where I had a, you know, I was seeing people in person. And so I, I left that and that left room for other people to step forward in their service when they were ready to, which is awesome. Um, so I think it's going to be different. Maybe some people will find brand new ways of being of service, new gifts, new abilities that come on because we're now energetically able to hold them or work, working with new guides that have new pieces to bring in for us. And some of us may just move into being this is more than enough. And just whatever brings us joy is enough to anchor on the planet. Yeah. And, and I don't know that there's one size fits all. Yeah. Yes. I love what you just said. And I, I'm so grateful for exactly how you said it, Shelly, because I am in that right now. I have to say, now that you said that, now I can put a, a name to what this experience is. There is no doubt with my shamanism and my music and with this massive project, which is so exciting, it's clear to other people, it could become so many other things. And I think I'm already in the flow of exactly that. And so, and I want to put this all together so everyone who's listening for wherever you're at, I can say with full transparency for me, I need to go back to the excitement of what brought this to me in the first place. And I absolutely humbly need to surrender. I need to allow. I need to receive. I need to trust. I need to make it part of my daily practice, as you so beautifully shared with us, Shelley to invite in uh, this help and let them know the benevolent ones, you know, I'm seeking, I'm seeking you at this place right now. Um, and then to step back and stop doing so much, allow the being because it's from the being where everything flows. That's where I get my downloads, my knowingness, my clarity, my bliss. I I'm, I'm a doer. I'm a big doer. So I'm, 
I'm wanting to take the mantle and put it down for now and just trust that ebb and flow of being and doing and being and doing. And um, I think this conversation you provided today was perfection for truly where for a lot of people are right now. Awesome. You know, I had, uh, as a personal note, I was kind of in a place with my career where it's not that there was anything wrong with it because I love what I do. I love what I do. But it felt kind of like I was at the end of one version of it or one timeline or whatever. And so what I did was I resurrendered into being of service again. And interestingly, that's when your request came to be on the show. So because I was willing to move into like a bigger expansion, then here I am, right? So sometimes it's just taking that, being willing to move. And I think what we're going to see with people is that there's going to be like new inventions of putting things together in new ways. I have no doubt that your shamanism is bringing, that you were a shaman in another lifetime. You've brought that skill set forward and now you're going to modernize it and make it yours in the ways that it needs to be today. And I think we're going to see a lot of interesting melds of things coming together, like um, maybe conventional medicine and alternative medicine all being in the same place where people can have a Reiki session or acupuncture or see um, a doctor for a prescription and everyone's working together. I'd like these hybrid services that are bringing in all of the elements together. I really feel like that's where we're going. And so don't be afraid if you are somebody who is of service that's listening to this. Don't be afraid to start asking questions like, what can I add into this? What else wants to come in now? What's ready to come in now that maybe is a little bit different than what you've been doing? Because, you know, as you evolve, if, as you reach that level of attainment, you're going to be an energetic match to new things coming in. And, and that's really how we're going to create the new. We are all pioneering into the new, and it can be absolutely awesome if we allow it to be. Hmm. That is an exciting thing to look forward to. I already see hybrids everywhere. I think folks like yourself, you probably took a bunch of classes besides hypnotherapy. And somehow in the soup of all of what you were learning, this thing emerges, which is really you. I have witnessed that so many times in these hyphens. Um, you know, at one point in our history that was always looked down upon. I know when I was an actress, when I was an actress, you weren't, it wasn't um, encouraged that you would be a triple th threat. And it wasn't encouraged that you could be on TV and film and theater. And it was like, and now that's all changed so much in the last decade. So well, I, our parents I were raised that way. You know, our parents asked us, well, what, you know, when you were little, they started asking, what do you want to be when you grow up? And it was like, it was one thing you go to school, you learn the skill, you be that until you retire. And that's, you know, and now it's not that at all. It nothing like that at all. In fact, Gabriel tells me that when we have our hands in different pots, it actually allows spirit to serve us. Um, no matter what the energies are doing. <laughs> excuse me sure. so for example when the energies were really tough people don't want to quit smoking I was a clinical hypnotherapist nobody's going to come to me to quit smoking when the energies are hard but they might really want to have a bar session or they might want to have a healing session of some sort where they can just sit and feel some relief so because I, I was able to offer a lot of different things the universe was able to provide for me no matter what was going on energetically Wow. Genius. Absolutely genius. Yes. That makes a lot of sense. You had a lot in your toolbox to pull out <laughs> and offer to people, you know, and I'm sure the appropriate thing came up and that whole idea about hybrid medicine. Oh girl, I am all for it. That would be so beautiful. Like the diagnoses mostly for Western medicine is, can be very exciting, but you know, root cause stuff. I love alternative oh. medicine and Absolutely. If I could see those two thrive together, wow. And the I, energy piece, just the energy piece, people learning how to work with their own energetics. And, you know, I dream of there being a day that 
they teach energetics in primary school where kids learn, you know, that how to control their own energy and how to move into alignment and how to dispel anything that they've picked up. Wouldn't that be amazing? Yes. It oh, would. yeah. I dream of that. <laughs> oh, Shelly. So where can people find you? Where can they work with you? What do you have going on? Um, you can find me at trinityesoterics.com. And that's where you can find all of the other stuff that I'm up to. I do put out free content from Monday to Friday. And at the bottom of that free content, I always have like if I have any events going on or whatever, um, it's completely free to sign up. It's just free supports for you. You can search any topic on my website to see what Gabriel has had to say about it. So it can really be very helpful along your way. And that's where you see my other services that are available as well. And Shelly, this is Dare to Dream. What are you next dare to dream? What are your future dreams and goals? I just want to be free. I want to be free mm. to be able to fully surrender into whatever the flow supports on any given day. That's what I want. If I wake up and I want to paint, I, I'm an iconographer, I paint. If I wake up and I want to paint, that's supported. If I wake up and I want to write, it's supported. If I want to work with people, it's supported. I just want to be so free that I can effortlessly move through and, and be of my highest service no matter what I'm doing. That's what I dream of. Thank you. Thank you for your dream. And I see it for you. Thank you for coming on this show so much. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It was just a joy to be here. Truly. And folks, if you liked listening to this and you would like to see Shelly and I and Shelly channeling, et cetera, go ahead, youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger, also on Spotify, under videos, under Dare to Dream. And I end today's show with this quote, through the sacred language of light, we unlock the boundless wisdom of the cosmos, transcending dimensions and healing souls. Embrace the journey of channeling, for within you lies the potential to connect with the universe's most profound energies. Subscribe to this number one transformation conversation, Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger. Next week on the show, I am featuring the amazing Gail Fakre, who is a success coach who believes we can be both materially successful and lead a spiritually empowered life. Her goal is to bring spiritual principles to the entrepreneurs and business leaders and to help spiritual followers achieve material success. Gail is going to be teaching and demonstrating several types of healing, including psychic surgery and magnetic healing. Thank you for joining us. Dare to dream, dare to turn all your dreams into your reality.